Hello, everybody. My name is Luke Marr, and this is Hot Mode. And today on Hot Mode, we're coming to you with your Critics' Choice Awards 2024 Fashion Roast and Review. It's a bit of a snooze fest, I'm going to be honest. It's a honk shoe, honk shoe kind of moment. The next video that will come out from Hot Mode is the Emmys 2024. I think technically maybe it's the 2023. But it's 2024 part one because the Critics' Choice is on the Sunday and the Emmys are on the Monday night. I have a feeling that maybe we're saving some of the big wow moments for tomorrow evening. That doesn't mean that I don't expect a lot. So without further ado, let's get into it. Also, in case you're like, Luke, what's with the background? I'm dog sitting, so I'm not my normal creature comforts. We gotta make do with what we got. So first up, we have Allison Williams. Now, Allison Williams is wearing this Zuhair Murad white jumpsuit. We don't really see many jumpsuits, so I do have to like commend her for that. It's not usually seen on the carpet, and when it is, it can be a little bit scary. But this version, I kind of like. It's in this sort of creamy color, and it has little details of silver crystals that walk throughout the bodice and right underneath the waist, which don't really do too, too much, but they don't do too, too little. But the idea that I do find really interesting is that the bodice is constructed and it almost looks like it's a wrap over jacket of some sort, almost like a tailored suit, but it's been cut off to create this strapless effect. You know, you can see it. If you look up close, you say, oh, it looks like, you know, a suit just was cut off at the top and then ripped off the body. As we move down, we can see there's a crease in the front of both of the legs. You don't love the way that it falls. I just think that it pulls a little bit too much. I just think we could have hemmed it so it almost just perfectly hit the floor like that. It's kind of important with a jumpsuit. You don't want it to look like a dress and the jumpsuit looks like a dress. And if it is a dress and I've been bullshitting the whole time, it looks like a jumpsuit and that's not good either. You know what I mean? You want to know what the garment actually is from looking at it. So that's my real big issue is the way that it pulls on the floor. I just think we could have called a tailor and said, hey. But the rest of it, honestly, I don't really mind. I do think that maybe the silver crystals right below the waist. The placement, not my favorite, but I appreciate what we were going for, even if I don't love the execution 100%. I do have to say, it definitely has like a passing grade to me. Next up, we have Ariana Greenblatt, who is wearing Louis Vuitton. Now this is a halter dress. It has a black leather bodice, and then she has this striped top tier and a cream bottom tier. It's very Nicolas Jasquier for Louis Vuitton which we've had a lot of discussions about. So like, again, we have to put our thinking caps on and say, all right, we're thinking five years ahead of everybody else for the most part. So we gotta, we gotta change our mindset a little bit here. I, I don't love it. I don't, I'm sorry, I don't. I appreciate the idea of the mixture of the leather with the gathering and trying to take on the idea of a tiered skirt. And I do think that we're seeing something that, you know, I feel like is gonna be a trend. The bodice with the black halter strap looks like an apron and I feel like we're gonna get into apron core. Again, just because aprons might possibly trend for 2024 doesn't mean that they're gonna look good. And I think in this regard, it looks a little bit Texas Chainsaw Massacre, black leather apron, sans, sans chainsaw. But at the same time, it could be the chic sister of Leatherface. I appreciate what we're going for. I don't love it. It doesn't land, unfortunately. I can't really see too, too much in it that I can defend a lot either. The only thing that I have is Nicola thinks a little far in advance. So in five years, we'll have the conversation about whether or not it was actually good. Next up, we have Ayo Edebury and she is wearing the row and she's wearing these custom Olivier Peoples glasses which I kind of like, I'm kind of into. The Windsor glass is very chic. You probably know it from the John Lennon. And I do think that it has had a small resurgence because of the virality of the Prada Villains collection that went viral on TikTok. Video coming soon, prepare yourself. But as for the white suit, I like that she's going for something different. I do, again, this is what I mean. Like it just feels like a little bit of a snooze fest and I, I get why a lot of the celebrities do feel snoozy. I need a little bit more Pelosi. The suit jacket, it fits fine. The pants are baggy and they're meant to be. And I get the cuff and the, the row shoes and the black leather. It's a very acquired taste. The t-shirt being a little bit baggy and holding out. I get what we're doing, but do I care? Is it really memorable? Does it feel like remnants of like quiet luxury to me? Yeah, it does. And so that's my thing. I, I do like that Ayo Edebury really does like, she tries and she definitely goes for it. And I do really like her and especially on the carpet, but at the same time, it feels a little bit Miami Vice. And I don't know, right now I'm just not really feeling 80s Miami crime cop. 
I'm okay. I'm good. Thank you. Next up, we have Billie Eilish. Finally, I'm happy enjoying myself here. So this is a Tom Brown look. And I feel like for the first time this award season, I'm like actually getting a Billie Eilish moment that I kind of can enjoy and think, wow, she looks nice. It's a white button down shirt that is essentially a gown. It is a white button down classic Tom Brown style, but we can see that underneath this black fitted midi length dress, there is the bottom of the shirt. And you can tell the Tom Brown shirt is a Tom Brown shirt because on the bottom, I guess left panel of the front of the shirt, it will have the Tom Brown sort of little sticker label thing. Also the back of the neck of most things, you know, have the red, white, and blue. But I like the fact that again, this is a brand that plays on this idea of tailoring. It always tries to remix and recreate that real sort of craftsmanship, but make it a little bit more chic. Think of it in an out of the box avant-garde way. And I think that creating a full sort of gown version of a button down shirt does that and I really like it. Now, as for the dress over top, I like the layering. I don't know if I exactly love the idea of the straps being built into the bosom. I do appreciate it. It might not be my favorite thing, but it's something that I don't really think I've seen, and especially not in a fabric where there's not gathering and texture in that regard either. You normally don't see it in just a sort of matte, simple, flat material. I do think that I'm trying to figure out if the waist is meant to look like that because if it is okay i still don't love it but okay but if it's not i don't really get what the fit issue here it's kind of like rolling up on itself but i don't really understand how it's doing that because in reality of course it's supposed to fit better than it rolling up on itself so i don't really understand that but i like the idea of the black dress over top i think it's a cool way of taking on layering she's still wearing dresses but she's wearing dresses on dresses and that i appreciate so I do really, really like the look. I think there's certain elements that, mm, but again, I appreciate that we're going for it. I appreciate we're trying something different. This is a good moment from Billy for me. Next up, we have Britt Marling, and she is wearing Prada. She's in A Murder at the End of the World. This Prada yellow dress, I understand would probably confuse people. I agree in certain elements. Here's the thing. I love that the neckline has this sort of flow over effect and it almost creates like a petal layer to the dress and it sort of covers the bodice, the waist, and most of the hips. I do really appreciate the fact that we are getting to see this sort of flap over a fabric and there does seem to be a sort of petal reference to me in that. As for the dress itself and not the shell from the neckline, I don't like the cut of it. I don't like the fit of it. I just think it's too boxy. It's too oversized and non-fitting that I think it hurts what we're trying to do with the fold over fabric. And I think then with the two sort of trains, Again, I get it, but I don't think that they're necessary or needed. I think rather just getting that sort of fold over detail to really hammer home this idea of Brit Marling being a sort of beautiful yellow flower, daisy, echinacea. Pick whatever you want, but being that sort of beautiful flower, rose if you want too. I think that's the most important part rather than trying to supplement it with other things. I also don't really love the shoe choice here. I appreciate, again, the attempt. I just don't think the attempt landed. You know what I mean? It's great to attempt to land a plane, but you have to land it. Otherwise, people die. Next up, we have Carrie Mulligan. She's wearing Armani Privé. Listen, is it boring? Is it blah? Is it really not that interesting? Sure, absolutely. I'm with you 100%. Do I think that it fits her really well? Do I think it's very sort of beautiful Armani? Absolutely. I mean, Armani, black velvet, you can't really go wrong with it as long as you're not trying to do too much. And I think here it fits her wonderfully. It's not trying to add anything. It's just trying to flatter Carrie Mulligan's figure. And then I like semi off the shoulder strap with this deep plunge. I think the line work works really well. I do think that the little sort of flip over of the bust as well sort of enhances that area and enhances that detail. I think the black crystal, because that is what that is and that's why it doesn't look black velvet because it's just covered in black crystals, I think is the perfect way to separate those blacks and to, in reality, create that line work. I just think it's a nice dress. I think it looks good on her and I'm going to take that. Next up, Charles Melton, Stan, love. 
absolutely very happy with this Valentino red moment. Double-breasted blazer, I think it's really sweet. I think that the white lining is perfect on it. Then we see this white shirt underneath, nothing crazy about it, but when Charles actually opens the jacket rather than leaving it closed, you can see that the bottom of the tie, which is always that sort of V triangular shape, actually has a V in reference to Valentino. I love that. I think it's a cute little detail. I think it works. I think the pants are okay. I'm not like obsessed with them, but at the same time, I like the fact that he went for the red. It's a full matching suit. I think that's good. And something about this carpet in particular, the men really shone. They really did sort of deliver looks. So we'll get into a bunch of them and I'm very proud and very happy with the men. As for the shoes, I think they're fine. I think they're doing the job. I think that they're complementing the black details on the tie, on the buttons. It's a good look. I think he looks nice. I like the use of the color. I feel like Charles is trying to be interesting. So I'm going to take this and I'm going to be happy. Next up, we have Christina Ricci. She's wearing Atsuko Kudo, who is the master, I would say, of latex. And so you have this beautiful fitted latex dress with a big, long train, pretty much kind of scalloping. I'm pretty positive that that slit is scalloped so it has that sort of circular cutting motif and while I wouldn't say that the plunging neckline is scalloped I do think that the idea of continuing curved effect up here as well sort of lets the slit and the train play all together quite nicely. The other thing that I think is really really interesting and I don't know if I've ever seen this before is that sort of metal wire that sits right underneath the bust, but it's still in the plunge. I kind of love it. Normally I feel like designers will utilize mesh fabric to hold that area together and it's never an illusion. I can always see it and I'm sorry, but it throws off the vibe. I think that this metal wire actually kind of perfectly works. I think it complements the curve that's going on throughout the latex. I think it's complementing the curve of the natural body and the bosom itself. I, like, I don't mind that. I also think even the necklace works in terms of the curve, even the straps on the shoe. I think that there's like playing on this idea of non-straight lines. Even the train, it's scalloped. I like that idea. I, I think Christina Ricci looks really, really nice. I don't think, again, you need to do too, too much. And I don't think anybody was trying to do too, too much. I think this really works in her favor. It looks lovely. I'm very happy with it. Next up, Coleman Domingo. Love. Love, love, love. Love, love, love. Love. Coleman is wearing Valentino. I believe this is haute couture. It's this stunning suit. It's like a mustard yellow. You know what the thing about Coleman Domingo is? He's so tall and sexy and handsome and just like he knows how to sell a garment. He understands it. And so that color just looks fantastic on him. And also he just kind of takes it there with a the look. He's not afraid of it. It never wears him. He always wears it. So I love the use also of these sort of goldish boots. They're perfect, they work. I do love this light blue shirt. I think it really allows the yellow to pop and it's intriguing. I like the way that it's not just your normal button down shirt either. I like the way that it sort of falls a little bit asymmetrically. I know Luke is also shocked by the like of asymmetry here. The thing though that really makes Coleman's look pop is this gold embellished jacket. It's this like gold foil, like shrunken foil coat that he wears slung over his shoulders. He looks like a king. He looks like a duke. He just looks chic. He looks hot. I think the gold perfectly complements, even though it's not anywhere near the shades that we're seeing in the other elements of the look. I just think that he looks dapper and chic and dandy and wonderful. And it's just like hot. Coleman Domingo looks hot. Next up, we have Divine Joy Randolph, who is wearing Giovanna Lewis, who it seems that she's worn a bit of Giovanna Lewis, and I like it. Listen, here's the thing. I think that Divine really understands the fact that she needs to know her body, and she needs to find designers that will understand and work with her body, and I really appreciate it, because that doesn't really happen often when it comes to plus-size women on red carpets. I love this. I like the gathering of the sort of strap. I like that it's not a thin strap. I like that it's big. I like that it's bold. I like that it has texture to it. Do I absolutely love the black sort of corset detail? No, I don't. I think that a continuation of the same fabric would have worked better. Do I think that maybe there was this idea of trying to really like reinforce and sort of have a good foundation in terms of the waist building? Sure, I do. And so I understand that and I can respect it, but do I like it? No, I don't have to like it and I'm not gonna like it, but I understand it and I 
have appreciation for it. Do I like this mermaid skirt? Absolutely, I do. I think it's beautiful. I like the gathering of the mermaid skirt. I think that it plays into what's going on with the sleeves. I do, again, think that we're mixing a lot of fabrics, and I don't know if it's necessarily necessary. I do wish that there wasn't shiny fabric, then sort of plush fabric, and then a matte fabric. I wish maybe the strap detail had been, again, in a sort of matte fabric rather than a silk sort of style to bring something together there. And I do like the crystals. They're utilizing the crystals here to sort of hide the seams that you would see from the gathering and that sort of moment where they meet there too. So again, I appreciate it. It's a designer that's working with what they have and making sure that they're hiding anything that wouldn't be seen as super sightly. Again, I love that Divine knows how to dress her body and her stylist knows how to dress her body and the designers that they're working with do. And I, I do love it. I just think that having the same textural fabrics would work better, in my opinion. But do I like the look? Yeah, I think in the context of the vibe of the Critics' Choice, I do think that it works. I think it's a nice look. I think it's fine. I think it fits her well, and I'll take it. Next up, we have Danielle Brooks, who is wearing Monsuri. This I like. This I think is fun. I think that this is smart. Listen, it does it feel a little bit Hunter Schaefer? Sure, but like, here's the thing. If somebody does something well, don't look at it and be like, oh, I can't do that. No, 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 do it. Try it, see how it goes. Because this is good. This makes me look at Danielle Brooks and I say, oh, Okay, she wants to be a fashion girl. Good, I'm happy to see it. This sort of pale, dusty, pink tulle gown is really intriguing. You know what it is? Normally I don't feel like I see tulle run in this sort of vertical manner where it's normally a horizontal sort of gathering of the tool rather than a vertical stripe sort of movement. So I do think that's really interesting. I do think that's fun to look at. I also love the fact that, again, she like understands I need to play with the fabric. I need to not let the garment wear me, but rather I need to wear the garment. I need to work with the garment. And I think that's what's going on here. I think the black bow, it's nice. I'm not obsessed with it by any means, but I do think that it allows a little bit of understanding of where the neckline is. I do think that it breaks just the full pink moment too. I don't know what it would look like without it, but at the same time, I don't hate it either. I think it's an interesting dress. I appreciate that she's trying to go for it. We'll take it. Next up we have Dua Lipa and she is wearing Prada. This is a custom gown and I'm really intrigued by it. Listen, I don't think that I love the look of it, but I do love the idea of it. I like the texture of it. I like that Dua Lipa is getting a little bit weird. To me, it reminds me of the time that Katya played Bjork on Snatch Game and then she told Jujubee that her hair looked like pastrami and that she wanted to eat it and sold. Yeah, I think that that's the aesthetic for me and I kind of love it. It's so quintessentially Prada because you have this red fitted floor length gown. It has this kind of really, I'm gonna be honest, like ugly ass texture. Like the texture is gross. It looks like intestines, it looks like pastrami. It's something to look at rather unsightly. You might see it in like a David Attenborough documentary about the animals eating each other. But Mutra Prada, has very much so since early on in her career said, I would like to find the line between beauty and ugliness and explore that and what that means. And so I can't fault this dress for trying to do that because it's a beautiful floor length gown, fitted, kind of clingy, but then it's so ugly. <laughs> I love that. I think it's great. I think it's wonderful. I think that that is what Prada sets out to do, and I'm not going to be mad at a brand for trying to do something that it's been playing with for almost, at this point, 30 years. And I also have to shout out to Dua Lipa because she's going with it. Dua's normally very, I'm a hot girl, I do hot girl things. I know that's Megan Thee Stallion, but it also is Dua Lipa. She's trying it. She's trying to let herself be washed over by the brand's ethos, house codes, DNA, and I respect it. I don't think I like the dress but I like what the dress makes me think about. And that I think is the most important thing when looking at a Prada dress like this. Next up we have Elizabeth Debicki. She is wearing Oscar de la Renta. And it makes me sad because I, I hate this so much. It makes me so uncomfortable. I don't like it at all. It is a kind of like a crystal tank top thing. It's not really a tank top, I'm sure, but it's meant to like look like a sheer crystal tank top. And I do really like that Oscar does this thing where it's sheer and like the motif for the crystals or the embroidery sort of covers things. I get why they're doing that, but 
Unfortunately, with the fabric, beige, sort of like meant to be skin tone fabric, mm-mm, it's not illusioning. You know what I mean? Like, it's not illusion. The illusion is not there. In fact, the illusion is so unthere that I am so deeply upset by it, I don't really want to look at the rest of it. But unfortunately, we have to look at the big satin bow tied. Like, I get it. I feel like it's trying to do like a cummerbund thing. And I, I appreciate what we're going for, but I don't like it. I don't know why the pants are so long and why they fit like that. It looks like she, I don't, again, I'm really not trying to be mean because I, I, I like Elizabeth Debicki. She's a beautiful woman. I think she played a very good Princess Diana, but she looks like Mr. Tumnus. It looks like she has hooves. I hate this. And I don't want to have to hate this, but I hate this because this can't happen again. We can't do that. I can't. I can't look at the shoe hooves. I can't. Oh, it's giving me anxiety. It's bad. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Next up, we have Emma Stone. She's wearing Louis Vuitton. If you see Emma Stone, she's usually wearing Louis Vuitton. This dress looked to me like it was scalloped, like that Christina Ricci dress. Scalloped, you know, from afar, you'd say, oh, scalloped. It's one shoulder scalloped dress how ugly because that's what I thought when I looked at it but if we zoom in really close up you'll be able to see the fact that those scallops are not like 2d sort of fabric just cut to sort of look curved like that rather I'm pretty positive that each of those pieces is some sort of pleated 3d scallop thing that have been lined across the neckline. And then the rest of the dress is actually a very, very fine pleat, almost like a Fortuny pleat, but it's, I don't think it's actually like a Fortuny pleat. It's more like a Mary McFadden pleat to me, but not, I guess, really as deep and crevicey and 80s-ish. And that falls all the way down, which I think is really intriguing and has this sort of gathered effect at the bottom. Again, I kind of like it which is weird. Starting off this portion of the video, this is a real 180 turn for me on camera. Because I was like, oh, that's so ugly. And I'm like, okay, I see it again. Nicholas thinking five years in ahead. Something about the 3D pleated space bun situation lined up. I kind of like, I kind of appreciate it. I think it's kind of cool. Again, the pleating style, I feel like it's very sort of old school, very v &A. and And Nicola does like a historical reference. And I feel like Emma Stone has also been doing a lot of kind of historical reference-y kind of things for Poor Things, which is the movie that she was in. So like, I think I get it, I think. I understand if people don't get it, you're allowed to not get it 100%, I don't judge you. But I think I understand it partially if I'm right. Maybe I'm trying to make myself understand it, but I don't think it's the most hideous dress. I don't love the one strap, but I do love a good find. Next up we have Greta Lee. She's wearing Loewe. And I think this is how I know that this whole show is kind of like the thing before the thing. This is based on a look from the most recent Loewe menswear collection, which also kind of came in, I think a little bit for the women's wear collection as well. And it was this idea of high-waisted pants that were all sort of crystallized with matching sort of long sleeve polos. Again, I think the polo is coming back. Prepare yourselves. We're, we're seeing these things and they're happening. I don't, I think it might be the pose here, but I don't really love the fit of the pant. Something about it is like the high waist. I don't know. I think that the models, and I say this respectfully, I think the models were able to pull off those high waisted pants because they're models. The rest of us normal human beings that are not gangly, giraffes, we're not really all built to wear high waisted pants. And I say that as somebody that I know that I couldn't pull off the Fisherman jeans by Loewe years ago. And I knew that as soon as I saw these pants in real life, that I could not pull them off either. This is not me being shaded Greta Lee at all. Greta Lee's 5'5", five five, okay? I don't mean to be rude, I'm 5'7". It's not always built for us. Certain things are just not built for certain bodies unless they're perfectly fitted. And I just don't think that the high-waisted pant works for me. Do I love the glitter? Do I love the polo? Do I love the oversized kind of feel and fit? Sure, but... Sometimes high-waisted pants, they just don't work on short people. It's the truth. Sometimes it happens. And that's how I feel in this moment. And if everybody disagrees, that's fine. I totally understand. Shit on me in the comments. Whatever. But do I appreciate that Greta Lee really went for it? She did a glitter crystal pant thing? Yeah, absolutely. She's trying. Next up, Jeremy Allen White. I like this Saint Laurent suit. I like the pinstripe black, almost like chalk stripe suit. I like the double-breasted. I love the lapels. I love the pants on this man. They look beautiful. I like the black boot. I like the black shirt. I like the lack of the tie, but I love the silver faux boutonniere. You know what I mean? I like this idea of this silver boutonniere with the fabric flower. It's really cool. It's really simple. I think it's a nice sort of play on things. I think this looks really good on him. I know it's pretty simple, but 
I also think that he looks chic. He looks elegant. The suit jacket fits him phenomenally. It frames him really well. The pants, the same thing. I think he looks nice. I think the men really took it this time around. Next up, we have Julianne Moore. Chanel. Hate. Hate, hate, hate. Loathe entirely. This is disgusting. I hate this dress. It's this purple silk. It's like a baby diaper, but like high weight. It's like empire waistline diaper thing. And I feel like what we're trying to do here is a Chanel reference, I'm sure. Like the length and like drop waists and 30s things. And like, I, you know, I get it, but it doesn't mean that it's not ugly. I also think the big Byzantine a little crucifix in the middle. Again, I get it. It's a Chanel reference. Da, da 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 I don't care. I think that it makes it even uglier. It's not necessary. The dress shape is just weird. Yeah, it has pockets. Julianne Moore seems to love pockets this time around, and I'm happy for her. That's wonderful, but guess what? It looks ugly. It's an ugly dress. It's, it's disgraciate. It's gross. I love the color. That's beautiful, but nobody needs to see this purple empire waistline pocketed diaper dress. Next up we have Lily Gladstone. She went very simple glamour. She's wearing Christian Siriano. I don't hate it. I really don't. Listen, normally I'm like, that boring. And like, I do agree, kind of blah, kind of boring, not really super interesting. But I do think that the off the shoulder draped thing, I haven't really seen it from her. I'm going to be honest, like since she's been doing promo, for Killers of the Flower Moon. I really haven't seen her do like simple fitted gown, gather 2011, 2012 Oscar Emmy dress. And so like, if she's gonna do it, I think this is a good carpet to do it. And I think that the dress fits her really nicely. The balloon over overskirt thing in the different shade, I don't really understand, but I think it's trying to like add drama. I guess I get it. And like out of all the Christian Siriano things that I, could possibly see in front of my eyes right now. I'm gonna take this and be very enjoying of the moment because I think that the man knows how to fit women. He understands it when it comes to simple silhouettes. And I think that he's done that here. I think she looks really beautiful. I think the color works on her. I think the overskirt thing is okay. It's fine. It doesn't hurt, doesn't help. It's just kind of creating drama. And I think she looks nice. Next up we have Margot Robbie wearing Balmain. Now this is a custom dress. Now, I know people are gonna be like, wow, this is Diet Zendaya at Cannes and in the brown, the brown leather. And like, you know what? That's fine. I'm okay with that. I'm fine with that. Cause this also to me is a different dress. It does have that draped leather bodice, which I'm gonna be honest, I kind of love for Olivier Rousson. I think it's a cool thing to have collaborated with leather artisans to make. And so I'm not bored of it because I think it's something that's really tough to do. And I understand that it takes a lot of time and a lot of work goes into it. And so it fits her beautifully. It fits her phenomenally. I think the idea and the concept has always been cool and I like to see it done. And it's done differently. I love the off the shoulder red rose 3D rose, look at those little roses. Those are 3D roses. I love that off the shoulder band. I think it's cool. I think it makes it much more Margot-esque rather than it trying to be the Zendaya dress. I think that those are cousin dresses, maybe sister dresses, but they're not the same. And I appreciate that. I think that it fits really, really well. And then I think that the way the skirt transition is really, really great. It keeps up the illusion of the draped leather. I think that the fit of it is fantastic. I think there's just enough train. And at the same time, I think the red is great because it doesn't necessarily blend in with the red of the carpet. I just think this is a really well done dress. I was a little concerned seeing the governor's award outfit that Margot wore. I was like, oh, no, no regressing things are happening and I'm not feeling comfortable this is not a safe space and now I feel better I feel safe in the space it looks good she looks good very happy let's keep this up and also it's not necessarily a Barbie look I don't think it's a Barbie look if it's a Barbie reference okay but it doesn't feel like oh Barbie reference to me and that I'm happy with too because we need Margot to transition out of just Barbie 1977 referencing. Have a fashion moment and be chic and elegant while also still reading as Margot. And I think this is a cool example of that being done. Next up we have Quinta Brunson who is wearing George Hobika. I like that Quinta's going for sheer. I like the black. I like the flower embroidery on it. I do think the flowers are really, really beautiful. I think they work really, really well. I think it's a nice dress. I think it fits her well. Am I like wowed by it? No, I'm not. I'm going to be honest. I'm not. But I do like that Quinta went for something sheer. I do like that she's doing a little bit more kind of like body 
moments recently. And I think that this is working really well. I like that it gets darker towards the waist and the brief area so that it helps to sort of draw in your eye there. And then it re-emerges as much more sheer and much less opaque as we move down. I think that the white flowers, I think they work. I think that whatever the color is that they're treated with, it's, it's kind of like a light blue and a purple and almost metallic reflective holographic. I think it works. I think she looks good. I'm into it. It's not super memorable, but I'm happy. Next up we have Roseman Pike. She's wearing Rodarte. I don't love it. I don't. I like the blue. I appreciate the blue. I appreciate what we're trying to do. I think the halter works, but again, I, there's something about the bust area and like those that pooling over that I don't really get. It feels like that Jennifer Lawrence Dior dress. I'm just, I don't get why bust coverings have to fit super tightly. I don't think they do, but just something about it, it feels like there's too much excess fabric. The skirt is fine. I don't mind it. I don't really love the flower in the middle. I get it and I appreciate the work that goes into creating those. I know it's a lot of work, but just something about the dress doesn't wow, doesn't dazzle, doesn't feel memorable. I think Rodarte is going to be fine. They've had a lot of really good looks, you know, in the past few weeks. One miss, I'm not going to be mad about, but Roseman really set herself up really hard and high for the Globes. So like everything after that is going to be kind of not, unless it's topping it, it's going to be tough to feel as major. She carried recently. So like, I'm okay, but like, I need us to step it up more going forward. Thank you. I need more. Next up, we have Tom Holland, who is wearing Prada. Now, this is a multi-layered three-piece brown suit. Prada loves brown, very much so the most uncommercial color. And so Mutra Prada, of course, loves uncommerciality. And I love the pink shirt underneath. I think it's a great way to really make it pop. And I do think the black tie helps with the button situation too, and plays into the black boot. And I like the boot. I think the boot works. Normally, I'm not like a black and brown person, but something about this. I'm kind of okay with. It does look a little wrinkled. That's what I'm gonna say. I, I can't not look at the wrinkles all over, so I don't really know what was going on. You know, I know pants naturally wrinkle, and I do think the fit of the pant is good. It's just the wrinkles of the pant, maybe it's the pose, those are throwing me off, but otherwise I think I really like those pants, and I like the fit of it. I do love the little waistcoat. I love the fact that it, there's so many buttons on it. I think that's chic. I think that's elegant. And I do like the, the continuation of the multi-brown layered situation too. I appreciate what we're going for. I just, the wrinkles are maybe throwing me off a little bit more than they should. This is making me excited for Tom. And I feel like he's getting to be a little bit more fashion, but it's still dapper. It's still gentleman. It still feels leading man. Next up, we have Tracy Ellis Ross, and she is wearing Fendi. And my issue is like, I've seen this dress like five times already, maybe it's four times, but it's the black off the shoulder version of the Fendi haute couture dress that like looks like a bandage. But again, I just, I don't understand how they did this whole like, oh, we're gonna do bandage fitted dresses. And then the fit looks off. Like there's some sort of creasing and puckering in it. And I don't really get it. And then like even just the waist area with the thing pulled underneath, it just like, it doesn't look well done. And the thing is, it's not Tracy Ellis Ross's fault because this has happened to multiple people in this dress. And it's just like, it's a weird, I don't really understand how they're like, this is haute couture. And it doesn't fit good. I'm not understanding. Oh, but sure, it would fit good. And also, there's a reason that we never did spring collections. This is the reason. Stop doing two haute couture seasons in a year. It's not working for me, so please stop. I do like the off the shoulder. I do like the black on her. The dress, if it was just fitted better, would be fine. But again, I can't even be mad at her because like this is the second time at least that I can remember that this dress doesn't really work and doesn't make sense and looks strange. It's sad and annoying to me because I actually really like the dresses on the runway. It's just on human beings that are not models, for some reason we can't fit them properly. And even on people that are models, Kendall Jenner, it didn't fit properly, so. And finally, we have Tyler James Williams. He is wearing Tom Brown. Here's the thing. I like the continuation of the oversized white shirt peeking out from underneath the jacket. I know people are gonna be like, that's so ugly, it's so whatever, it's not blah, 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 but like, that's Tom Brown. Like, that's that's what it is. It's gonna be weird and out there and avant-garde, and it's not gonna be proportions that you understand because that's Tom Brown, so kind of have to eat it. Again, I do like the shoulder slung over the shoulder. I think it's cool. I think it's fun. I think the pant length is very Tom in and of itself. I don't know if I love the shoe choice. That's my one issue. I feel like a simple Tom brogue would have been better because I think it really would have let 
the pant do its thing and something about the fact that the shoes kind of like are platformy and they have the lines in the front I just I think it plays with the pant in a way I don't really love but I like the shirt tucking out from underneath I, I appreciate that he's trying you know what I mean Tyler James Williams is really trying so I respect that it's not my favorite Tom Brown look though so that is the end of our critics choice let's talk about best and worst as for best, I am going to put Charles Melton and Valentino I really like. Coleman Domingo was really, 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 really good. Jeremy Allen White I thought was really nice too. Margot Robbie I'm going to give. As for worse, Julianne Moore. Hated. Despise. Really, that's going to leave a bad taste in my mouth. Roseman Pike I really didn't love either. Tracy Ellis Ross, I didn't like that Fendi dress one bit. Oh, and Elizabeth Debicki. That one was a little traumatic too. Please let me know what you guys thought. Stick around for the Emmys video. It will be coming out very shortly. We will see you guys in the next one. And TTYL.